Hey people, welcome back. Thank you for joining us for more news from the world of poker. In this episode, we've got Nick Airborne and Wesley revealing a multi-million dollar scam. Now oh, we're gonna show you guys the, how the stack has power. Four, diamond four. You can see the suit from here. There's a record-breaking 24-hour stream from the Hustler Casino. And we take a look at when you should and shouldn't fold pocket kings, or as some people like to call them ace magnets, pre-flop. Oh, the speech from Joe as well. Oh, I'm Oh my gosh. What would you do if you were Joe and you got dealt pocket kings here on the Stone Cold Bubble, which is worth 17k? Before we dive into the most recent poker drama, I owe you all a big apology for the extended break. I've been dealing with some really bad pain in my neck, and after an injection, things took on an unexpected turn for the worse. But the good news is, I've now got some help with editing videos, so you shouldn't have to wait too long for the next one. So because I won't need to spend so much time in front of the PC, I'll be able to keep you all much more updated with news from the world of poker. Let's kick things off with the revelation that Nick Airball has been scammed once again. On December the 3rd, Nick Airball took to Twitter, somebody he thought was a close friend had cheated him out of more than a million dollars in home games. He said he was hurt and upset, and for obvious reasons, more would follow soon. But later that day, he shared another tweet that he had no more patience and that it was Yi Shen, aka Mars. Wesley later confirmed this and shared a video where you could clearly see cards with UV markings on the back. Now we're gonna show you guys the, how the stack has problem. Four, diamond four. You can see the suit from here. Wesley explained how the scam had worked, explaining that Mars had brought the cards to the game. And it seems that Mars and his accomplices have took more than $3 million from a series of home games. Poker News shared a video of Wesley and Mars talking about it, which you can click up here to watch. In it, Mars says that he'll be going back to China and not playing poker anymore. However, that's not before he made some thinly disguised threats towards Wesley. As we peel back the layers on this poker scam, we see there's a reoccurring theme. Nick Airball has found himself at the center of some dodgy dealing yet again. Maybe he's just too trusting, or perhaps he keeps his friends close and his enemies even closer. Can you imagine trying to concentrate for 24 hours while playing high stake poker? That's exactly what happened at the Hustler Casino Live's 24 hour poker stream. There were some huge hands, including this one where Key Tim punched off 200k to Airball. Thank you. That's a raise, right? Action starts with Airball in the 1k straddle. Mo raises to 6k, and Nick has the perfect straddle hand of pocket aces, so he re raises the 26k. Soul reading. Uh oh. And as I say that, Keaton then bet 70k thinking the airball might be doing something bad. Right. Go on. All in. And after Nick airball shows Keaton pretty much is pot is committed to so has to call. Is Keaton committed? Twice. Yes. All right. Airball holds. They choose to run it twice and Nick Airball takes down the 400k pot. Another big hand that happened deep into the grind is when Hank puts it all in with pocket nines only to find out that he's pipped by pocket tens. JR's got tens, Hanks has got nines. All in? Hanks is all in. I don't think JR's gonna fold. The last 45 minutes have been particularly ugly for Hanks. Like 130. Yeah, JR's like, you got me, you got me. I'm not folding tens, buddy. A rough, uh, a rough 45 minutes for Hanks. How much he could do here? Oh, he's got a draw though. Looking for a club. Now he's got to fade a ten, and uh, the ten of spades is the only card. Or straight. Oh wow, the club gets there and Hanks wins it. So JR. Picks up a straight draw. Oh, he hits the straight, but it's the eight of clubs. So Hanks is going to win that one. They'll run it twice, though. And I would imagine, in all likelihood, chop it up. Got to be pretty happy. You get tens versus nines, and nines, uh, nines chop it up. That's they choose bad. to run it twice, and after the first board runs out with a flush for Hank, he misses the second and they should have chopped the pot for 100k each. However, unfortunately for Hank, he didn't see that the eight on the first board not only gave JR the straight, but also gave him a flush. Oh no! Oh no, he didn't realize he's a fourth club out there. You wanna give him, okay. He hit the set on the turn. Giving JR a straight draw. The straight got there, but Hanks did not realize they had a club in his hand. This shows that even poker professionals can make mistakes deep into grinds. My advice is to never muck your hand and let the dealer check it out. But speaking of huge hands and big mistakes, we come to the first hand in tonight's special segment of when should you fold pocket kings pre-flop? Santosh opens his pocket kings to 7k. Life is good. Santosh has had a rough night. 
but could it turn around? Oh, no. And then gets three bet by Abel to 27K. Kings versus aces. Airball's got Santosh covered. And Santos started the hand with $323,000. We could see one of the biggest pots of the night here, folks. Santosh goes for the four bet of 70 and then Nick five bet shove to 300K. All in. All in. Santosh double checks, he makes the call. $623,000 in the middle. Santosh quickly calls about any hesitation. And I think anybody, especially a poker pro, should really think about calling the 300 big blind jam pre-flop. Santosh down to one final card, needs a cowboy. That's not it. But the fact that it's a cash game and it's Nick Airball, it can be doing this with nonsense, I'm pretty certain I would call as well. But Nick's aces hold up and he takes down a 600k pot. But despite those monster wins, Nick Airball still managed to finish 300k down on the night. But continuing on, on our special segment of when you should fold Kings pre flop, we get Joe Hash and being dealt pocket Kings on a World Poker Tour bubble. 40. He's got a massive stack oh. on the bubble and just, oh my goodness. Oh. Picking up. One of the toughest questions poker tournament players might get asked is when would they fold Pocket Kings pre-flop? All tournament poker players have faced some really tough decisions, but imagine you enjoy shoes. You get dealt Pocket Kings on a World Poker Tour bubble, which is worth 17K. So if you bust, you go in with absolutely nothing, but if you make it through, you've got at least 17K in your bank. So we pick up the action here. Ben raises under the gun. Yeah. Joe goes for a standard free bet with Pocket Kings. Okay, you can let it go. You've, won a, you've got enough pots. Ben eventually four bets, putting Joe all in. As well. All in. Oh my gosh. Oh, he just hates it. I mean, even if he has ace-king, he still knows he has 30%. And while he's thinking about it, you can hear the announcer say that he's hand for hand, which means that must be near the Stone Cold Bubble. Oh, we can hear the floor in the background saying that after the conclusion of this hand, we're going to be pausing the tournament clock. It sounds like we're going to be going... Hand for hand. Hold, That's sick. Just got it. He you, my. If you show it, I'll show it after you fold. You are sick, man. Joe tanks for a while and eventually lays it down saying, I think this is the sickest fold, but I feel like you've just got it. Oh, you are sick, man. my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. After Joe turns over his pocket kings, Ben does indeed show that he had pocket aces. Given that 17k can buy you about 5,000 Big Macs, I definitely would have folded as well. But that's probably why I'm playing for £2.22 and not 17k. After that, the bubble bursts and Joe makes a 17 grand. But not only does he cash the 17k, he manages to keep going and rack up a cool 25 grand. And 25 grand is nearly 8,000 Big Macs. I'm sure everybody remembers Garrett Adelstein, also known as G-Man, accusing Robbie and the Hustler Casino Live of cheating him back in 2022. If you don't know about it, you can click up here to watch a video that breaks it all down. But in a nutshell, G-Man goes for a big bluff on a Miss River, and he gets called by Robbie, who's got Jack High. Whoa, that's, oh look God. at Garrett's face. I don't, oh, look I don't understand sort of what's happening Ten. right now. She then went on to say that she thought he had ace high, so then everybody in the poker world was questioning, well, why did you call with a jack? Ace high. Ace high. Uh-huh, and then so why call with jack high then? First of all. After the dust settled, she gave him the money back and G-Man accused her in the casino of cheating him. G-Man got banned by the casino and decided to take a break from poker. But in early December in 2023, he teased on Twitter that he was going to make a comeback soon. Well, everybody is already back. G-Man went on to make a grand entrance and ironically, he bluffed with Jack Ford, which is the same hand that he got scammed by. Garrett, oh boy. kicker's gonna play. Garrett, bad. going crazy with the Robbie. Oh, that's annoying. I really feel like he hit the five. And you gotta tell me if he hits this five. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> get this. Nodding at the Robbie hand, which caused the big storm in the first place. It was the biggest winner in the Bally Poker livestream, finishing over 100 grand up. Now, continuing on in tonight's theme of high stakes poker and big mistakes. The road to today's final table of the World Series of Poker main event paradise. The World Series of Poker final table featured a massive mistake made by a dealer. As the final table tension reached its peak with three players left, Nelson gets it all in for a huge pot and loses. I don't want to say the writing's on the wall, but it's grim. Oh, look who's loving this. Show. Look who's loving this, too. Oh, and all in and an immediate call, of course, from Ziegle. Guaranteed second place payout. Yeah. Oh, but uh, look at the casual. Oh, well, you can't waste the 50 bucks. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> Nelson double checks with the dealer how much he is, and then he hands over the 48 million in chips. Top, top, not good enough for Daniel Nielsen. 
Eagle Eyed Watchers then saw that he should only give them 38 mil, meaning that he gave them 10 mil extra. This left him with only 5 big blinds instead of 15. He went on to bust not long later, but after he got told of the huge mix up, he said he questioned it with the dealer at the time, but it's too late to do anything about it now. The World Series of Poker released a statement saying it's too late now and it's pretty much tough luck. And there you have it folks, a bunch of recent poker news that kept us on the edge of our seats. From the accusation of scams to marathon poker sessions, mind boggling blunders and the return of GMAT, the poker world is always full of surprises. And that's the video done and done, so double check your cards, double check the dealer right and double check that you've hit subscribe you can click up here to watch the last episode of poker news or you can click over here to watch the first episode in season two of poker at the pub or you can click subscribe yeah click that one click that one and i'll see you in the next video